This is the Mass of Sunday within the octave of Christmas, with commemoration of the great Apostle and Evangelist St. John. And normally on this day there's a blessing for wine and beer for the Feast of St. John in the ritual. So if you have any after Mass, we'll be happy to bless it. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In Troy, for all the time, we pray for you. Thank you for your time. 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 And it took a lot of day. We did what you in Chita, Deus, Deus, Meos, Quarit Vistis, the Sanium of Mea, the Quarit Contrabas, and they spare on day on Conio at Hukum, Pidibo, Illy, Salipali, both the States Mea, Gloria Patri, Et Filio, Et Spiritu Santo, Sicodera, and Principio, and look at some fair and Sicola, Sicola, and enjoy the whole entire day. A day in Quayla, he began to the country. And lost in the only company, Quayti to Chelamatera. Confidere de O, Omnipotenti, Beate Maria, Sembe Virginie, Beate Michela Arcangelo, Beate Juan Baptiste, Sandis Apostolis, Sveto and Paolo, Omnibus Sandis and Bobis Patris. Quia de Cavinimis, Cogidas in a verbal opera, Mea Copa, Mea Copa, Mea Massima Copa. Idea of Preco Beata Miriam Zemma Virgin, Beata Michela Marcangelo, Beata Miwan and Baptista. Sandos of Bosodos Petum Paulum, Omnis Sandos of Vos Fatres, Orari Crome, Ad Dominum de Nostra. As you write to an ill defense deal, Sedimisi is part of these political deeds of internal. Amen. Confira de Omitenti, Viate Maria Santa Virginia, Viate Michael Angelo, Viate Onom Teste, Santa Sofa, Sertacci Palo, Amen of Santa Satibi Pater, Quia Pacadi, Namini Sicaci Tondo del Dopre, Mea Cupa, Mea Cupa, Mea Maxima Cupa, Udio Pitoa, Viate Mian Santa Virginia, Viate Michael Angelo, Viate Onom Teste, Santa Sofa, Sertacci Palo, Amen of Santa Sate Pater, Arari Pame, Adonde de Mia. Is it not the best way? Omnipotens Deus, et demisis peccatis vestris, peruga vos et vitam eternam, Amen. in the gentium absolutionem et remissionem vegatorum nostrum, to one nobis omnipotens et misericordiaminus, Amen. Deus to conversus vivificatis nos, et pastula tabitorum, O sin in omnis domine misericordiam tuum, et salitum per nobis, domine exaudio rastanem meam, primus et veria, dominus nobis, pecum spiritu tuum, Amen. Du medium silentium, tenere in omnia, in nos in suo cursum medio mitra abere domnipotens semotus domine de ceris a regalibus sedibus venit. Domnes regnavi de conem in tutus est, in tutus est domine suatitudine me preaching sit se. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Santo, sicura ratum principio nunca semper, et in sicura sicura romanen. Du medium silentium tenere in omnia, in nos in suo cursum, Medium iter avere omnipotenza motivos domine de ceris a regalibus senibus venit. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christi eleison, Christi eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra passum inibus homi voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te. Gracias agimus tibi, Propter manium gloriam tuum, Domine Deus Reis Celestis, Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Filio Nigenite Iesu Christe, Domine Deus Agnus Dei Filius Patris, qui tolis vegatamum di miserere nobis, qui tolis vegatamum di succidere, de pregazionem nostrum, qui sedes a testarem patris miserere nobis, coniam tuus salus santus, tuus salus dominus, Tu salus altissimo, Gesù Cristo, con Santo Spirito, in gloria dei Padri. Dominus Vobisco, in spirito tu uomo. Oremos, omnipotenza in vita di Deus, 
Dirige actus nostros, et benefacino tu ut in nomine didacti fidito in meriam arfonis et peribus abundare, qui te convivere regna et dignitate, Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Oremus, Ecclesiam tuum Domine benius illustra, ubeati Ioannis, apostoli tu ed evangelisti, et numerate doctrinis et domine et fevelia sanitaria, per Domine nostrum Iesum Christum fidem tuum. Qui te convivere regna et dignitate, Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Gracias, Cristo, le reati pale posse ad Galatas, Fratres, <coughs> quanto tempo ne eres, pagulus est, nicio di fera servo, cum si dominus omnium, se subjetoribus e actoribus est, usque ad infinitum tempus a patre, ite ad nos, cum essemus pagulis, sub elementis mundi ramos e vientes, ad ubi bene plenitudo tempulis misiteus filium sum, fatum ex muliere, fatum sub lege, vileus vis sub lege eram ilimerent, ut ad opsione filiorum ecit peremus. Quale matem estis fidi, visiteo spiritum fidi sui, in quale vestre clamantem abba, pater. Itaque, iam non es servus et filius, posi filius et heres per Deo. Deo gracias. Speciosus homo per filius omnium, de fustes gracem ad istuis, erutare quam erum verum bonum di coevo per a mea regi. Lingua mea, calum scribe, velocite scribentis. Alleluia, alleluia, Dominus regna vite quorum induit, induit Dominus vatitudine me per cinxit se virtute. Alleluia. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Catholics in Galatia, chapter 4. Brethren, as long as the heir is a child, he differs in no way from a slave, though he is the master of all. But he is under guardians and stewards until the, sa- until the time set by his father. So we too, when we were children, were enslaved under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. The adoption of sons is sanctifying grace. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. 
so that he is no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, an heir also through God. The Holy Gospel. Taken from St. Luke, chapter 2. At that time, Joseph and Mary, the mother of Jesus, were marveling at the things spoken concerning him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and for the rise of many in Israel, and for a sign that shall be contradicted. In your own soul a sword shall pierce, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also Anna, a prophetess, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Azar. She was of a great age, hanging, having lived with her husband seven years from her maidenhood, and by herself, by, as a widow, to eighty-four years. She never left the temple with fastings and prayers, worshipping night and day. And coming up at that hour, she began to give praise to the Lord and spoke of him to all who were awaiting the redemption of Israel. And when they had fulfilled all things as prescribed in the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, into their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was full of wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Thus are the words of the sacred scripture. By way of announcement, please pray for uh, a certain Agnes, or rather her name was Agatha from Windsor, Ontario. Father Pfeiffer just buried her a few days ago, and she died a few uh, last week, so pray for her soul. And she was uh, a faithful Catholic soul. And also pray for uh, our seminary. We have eight seminarians in the Kentucky Seminary, Our Lady Mount Carmel. And um, they're home on vacation now. And pray for all of them that they uh, do God's will. And that we uh, hopefully more priests will rise up especially in this so-called year of mercy, which is celebrating 50 years of Vatican II. And this celebration, you know as well as I, if Archbishop Lefebvre was alive, he would tell the Holy Father, Holy Father, you can grant us jurisdiction, you can grant us the Latin Mass, you can grant us our seminaries, but we, we will have nothing to do with celebrating this council, which was heretical, and which is destroying the Catholic Church from top to bottom. But contrary to what Archbishop Lefebvre would say, the leaders of the Society of Pius X, the new Conciliar SSPX, they gladly welcome it, and they are speaking with double forked tongue, that uh, they want to celebrate the Year of Mercy, but not the way the Pope says so, but the way, well, we'll celebrate it in a Catholic way. But with God, you can't play those games. And you look at all the lives of the saints and in the Holy Scripture, they, God punishes them for playing games with, with the things of God. We're not allowed to do that and to be double-tongued. And uh, the great example for all of us is the, the old man, Eleazar. Eleazar was told, look, we know you can't, you're a Jew, you can't eat pork. Because God forbade the eating of the pork. Why? Because eating pig was associated with the pagan practices. And the pagans often sacrificed pigs to the, to the devil. So to, God made a clear distinction. As St. Thomas Aquinas says, that the Jews who had the true religion before Christ came, that they were not to eat pork, to stay away from false worship. And so... Eleazar, he was old, and they had mercy on his old age. It was a time of mercy. And they said, look, we know you can't eat meat, but look, we'll, we'll just give you some chicken. You eat it, and uh, you know before God that you're not eating pork. You're obeying God's law. You're not breaking any law. And just eat it, and we'll spare your life, and everything will be uh, happily ever after. So what did Eleazar do? A great example for all of us in this terrible time of double speech, 
in this terrible time of compromised language, which Vatican II is full of, which the doctrinal declaration is loaded with, and signed by Bishop Fallet, sadly, and needs to be rejected and condemned by him. And hopefully he'll do that before he die. Do pray that he will. I don't want to see Bishop Fallet die with his name on that document, because I know if I signed it, I'd go straight to hell, because it is a true compromise against the Catholic faith that accepts Vatican II, accepts the new Code of Canon Law, which is loaded with heresy, accepts the new profession of faith, which professes a faith different from our Holy Roman Catholic faith of tradition. It accepts the religious liberty, which is a heresy, condemned over and over again by the Church. It's very, very grave. This is why we're in this new phase of the war. So we got to imitate the great Eleazar. And what did he do? He said, if I eat this, I know before God I, didn't, I won't break his law, but I will give the appearance to all the young that I have compromised. And he said, I will not do this. And they said, okay, old man, we're going to kill you then. He said, kill me. I'd rather die obeying the law of God than to break it to please men. And so, of course, he was martyred. And uh, there was also in the Book of Maccabees the great mother of the twelve children. Her children, twelve of them, each one of them fried alive, cut to pieces, beheaded, tortured, drowned in front of her eyes. And the twelfth one, uh, oh, no, I'm confusing, that's Saint Symphorona. She had twelve children. The one in the Maccabees had seven. The seventh son, who was the youngest, started to waver. And he was scared because he just saw his all his brothers butchered before his eyes. And they said, you're next unless you burn incense to the, the god of Moloch or Belial, whoever it was. And what did he do? He, his mother jumped in. And this is the greatness of good mothers. She told him, son, your, your, your brothers have obtained the crown. Don't lose the crown. Don't forfeit the crown of eternal la happiness for a little short time of fun on earth. And she encouraged him to go through with death, martyrdom. And the, the seventh son, they tortured brutally before her. And then after him, he died and he died glorious. And then they killed her. So, sounds very... Peaceful and charming for a Christmas sermon already, doesn't it? <laughs> but that's the Catholic faith. And right when Christ is born, and we're all, we're still breathing the charm and the beauty of the manger, the little baby in the manger, who, who is not drawn by something so simple, so beautiful, that God would become a baby for us? It's a reality. And we're still seeing the charm of the angels singing, Glory to Excelsis Deo in this whole Christmas tide, and the shepherds coming and kneeling down to hold the child Jesus to kiss his sacred feet. And in the midst of all this beauty and charm and the, the night that turned light and uh, the singing of the angels, the very next day, December 26th, blood. St. Stephen, the first martyr, stoned to death. Day after that, today, St. John. St. John, he would not die a martyr, but he should have, if God didn't protect him. They, they tried to boil him in, in oil, like a french fry. And he came out stronger and younger. So they just said, you know, <laughs> there's something supernatural here. And so they let him go, and they exiled him to the island of Patmos. But St. John will be spared as the last apostle who stood at the foot of the cross, who said Mass for the Virgin Mary in the town of Ephesus. He was bishop there. And you can still see the little house of stone and the altar that he said Mass for many years with the Virgin Mary. And when he was exiled on Patmos, it's there that he saw the events of our time. He saw the seven woes, the seven trumpets of the angels. He saw the... 
the, uh, the beast of the apocalypse, the beast with seven heads and ten horns rising up against Christ and his church to persecute the church. He saw the reign of the Antichrist for three and a half years. He saw Enoch and Elias who will rise up. Uh, they're, they're not dead. They have a mission yet to fulfill. And when they come back on earth, they're going to be telling the Catholics, remember Archbishop of Fed, hold fast to Catholic tradition, don't compromise the faith. And the Antichrist will martyr them in cold blood in the street. And, and ABC and NBC News will broadcast this all over the world. And they will know they're not just two fanatics because they will work miracles. They will prove that they are Eli Elias and Enoch by the power of their words and by the power of their miracles and true miracles because the Antichrist will seduce, get this, the Antichrist will seduce all the Jews, of course. For, him, they, for them, he will be their Messiah. And he will rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And already one of the statesmen of the United States says the capital of Israel is Jerusalem. It's not. But that's where they're going to move it to prepare for the building of the temple, which is already under plan. And then um, uh, the Antichrist, he will seduce even the Muslims the Muslims who are invading Europe right now as a punishment from God, and they're not some, some uh, helpless little children and women it, and uh, feeble boys. These are grown men. They are strong. It is a real invasion, something similar to the barbaric invasions of the 600s and 700s. They are looting, raping, destroying. The police don't even know what to do with them all. They can't control them. And thank God, Poland has come into some sense. And you can see, you should all see it, this great priest who stood up in his cassock, speaking to the crowds, telling them, we must stay Catholic Poland. We must resist this Muslim invasion of our country. And we call upon the Mother of God, and you must fight to defend Poland. And he had all of them shouting, for God, for homeland, and for family. And... Uh, and he reminded them of the great, great warriors of the, the Hussars. These were the Crusades of Poland who, were, who had the indulgences by the Pope to fight the Muslims. And they had to. It's, like, it's similar to now. And if they didn't fight, we would all be speaking Arabic right now and praying on some Muslim rugs. So the great Joseph... Uh, um, John Sobieski John Sobieski who in the 1600s rose up and uh, some of the great Franciscan saints preached those crusades St. Mark Daviano is one of them Bishop Williamson had a letter on him a few months ago and uh, reread it and it's the prayer of St. Mark da Daviano so thank God Poland has some sense but this is a genuine plan of the enemies of Christ to completely destabilize the economy of Europe to prepare it for the one world government. It's, and make no mistake, I was just told today there's something like 30 or 50,000 coming to Syracuse, Muslims pouring in. I don't know if that's true, but anyway, it's certainly part of their plan to destabilize and also these Muslims are not moving in to become good Germans or good British men or good uh, Polish they're moving in, as they're saying themselves, we're going to make this land for Allah, for Muhammad. And uh, there can be no peace with the crescent. We fight with the cross. That's our weapon. And we must oppose the crescent and all false religions and all com uh, compromise of the Holy Catholic faith. So you see... Second day after Christmas, St. John, and he's seeing all these events, and he writes them down, and we're, we're living in them now. The apostasy of the church from the top. The, the dragon will swing his tail and bring a third of the stars down. That is the great apostasy of Vatican II. When all the, the stars of heaven will fall, that is the Catholic bishops, losing their faith. And even the darkness, the, the moon will be darkened. It's the Pope. The Pope himself promoting the ideals of Freemasonry 
And just saying a few weeks ago, Pope Francis, that the Jews also can be saved. So you got atheists, Jews, sodomites, they're all going to heaven, according to Pope Francis. But you read the words of the sacred scripture, is that what it says? It says sodomites, effeminates, he calls them. Uh, blasphemers, sorcerers, fornicators, adulterers will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So he's preaching a new gospel. And that's why we are traditional Catholic. Because we want to stay faithful to what Christ taught, what the church has always taught. And no pope, no bishop, no priest has the right to change it. Our catechism in the Catholic faith. And then third day after Christmas, more blood, the holy innocents. Herod sent the armies into Bethlehem and slaughtered the two-year-old boys and younger. And as scripture foretold several hundred years before, that the, there will be weeping and wailing in the streets of, of Bethlehem. And it must have been quite a sad sight with the uh, helpless mothers crying over their bleeding children throughout all of Bethlehem because of Herod's hatred, the state's hatred of the Catholic faith, of the true Redeemer. And so, third day, December 28th, the Holy Innocent, more blood. Caused by who? Caused by Christ the King. And then the fourth day, December 29th, another martyr, more blood. St. Thomas of Canterbury, St. Thomas Becket. He will be martyred in uh, December 29th, 1171, in the Cathedral of Canterbury. In the great St. Thomas will oppose the state, that the state does not have a right to make laws over the Catholic Church. And he knew the king, and he defended the rights of the Catholic Church against the, the, the state. Just like we Catholics, we have to defend the rights of the Catholic Church against these horrible laws of the Supreme Court that are smashing what's left of the family and what's, what's left of sanity in the education of the schools and universities and by the promotion of the, the horrible uh, rainbow flags. So all this blood, right after the birth of Christ, to show us the fulfillment of these words of, of the Gospel that St. Simeon, said to the Virgin Mary, prophesying the sorrows of her heart, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and for the rise of many in Israel. Fall because they'll refuse him, and the Jews will refuse him and be punished uh, by, the, by the destruction of Jerusalem in the year 70. And the rise of many in Israel, that is, those who believe him, those who believe and embrace the Catholic faith, they will rise and... Uh, Saint their soul, <clears throat> and for a sign that shall be contradicted. The sign, the, the sign of Christ, of course, is his cross. Christ crucified, that's his sign. When he comes to judge at the end of the world, he, he's going to be carrying the cross. The angels will gather all the relics of the true cross that are scattered throughout the world, all the little splinters. They're going to rebuild the cross, and Christ will come carrying that trophy in majesty and glory, with fire, <clears throat> as Daniel the prophet says, fire tearing before his throne. And so, <clears throat> the sign of contradiction is Christ crucified. And this is the Catholic faith. This is the Catholic faith. Now listen to these words of the great Pope Pius XI in his Quas Primas, his encyclical on the kingship of Christ, he says these words, because this is our battle now. And this battle really started taking root with the Protestant Revolution. And then the French Revolution, which was the, the, the official overthrow of the kingship of Christ on earth. And the twin sister of the French Revolution was the American Revolution. And the Freemasons, they didn't have any... Catholic civilization and monasteries and nuns to kill. They just planted the seeds here and choked out the seeds planted by the Catholic missionaries here. I quote, Pius XI, We refer to the plague of secularism, its errors and impious activities. This evil spirit, as you are well aware, has not come into being in one day, 
It has long lurked beneath the surface. The empire of Christ over all nations was rejected. And that was officially done at the French slash American Revolution. We will not have Christ to reign over us. Hence, his name will not be on our constitution. His heart will not be on our flag. And as you know, France was precisely punished because of this. The Sacred Heart of Jesus, on June 17th, 16, I think it was 1683, 1689, asked St. Margaret Mary, tell the King of France, put my heart on the flag, and I will bless France. That was the mission of France. But the kings, one after another, gave, gave excuses, and they said, you know, well, we can't be too extreme. What, what are the people going to say? What are the, what's the... What's the vote of the majority going to think about this? And uh, they never did it. So France, a hundred years to the day, June 17, 1789, the king's head was cut off and it was the bloody French Revolution, the official uncrowning of Christ the King. And uh, liberty, equality, fraternity was the shout of the French Revolution. And that's what triumphed at Vatican II. So we're fighting the same principles. It's the same fight in line with all the popes of Pius VII, Pius VI, Pius VII, Pius IX, Gregory XVI, Leo XIII, St. Pius X, Pius XI, Pius XII, Benedict XV. We're fighting that same fight. And Archbishop of Feb wanted you to understand this, that we're not just some fringe group fighting for some, some uh, prin principles that we love. We're fighting for a la whole line of saints and popes. That's why we can fight with peace and with victory, because we're going to win. Because Christ is king, and he's going to reign in spite of his enemies. So we must not compromise. and We must continue holding the faith, spreading the true Catholic faith. So listen to Pius XI again. So Christ was rejected, he says. The right which the church has, has from Christ himself to teach mankind, to make laws, to govern peoples and all that pertains to their eternal salvation, that right was denied. Then gradually the religion of Christ came to be likened to false religions and to be placed ignominiously on the same level with them, modern governments. The Catholic religion is put on a foot with all the other false religions. And what does God say in the, in the first commandment? I, with thunder and lightning and earthquake, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, underline, circled, highlighted, not have strange gods before me. Hello, U.S. government, why were you founded, and all the Western nations founded with Christ on an equal plane with these false religions? And we are paying the price for it now, watching our country fall to pieces. It's a result of putting Christ on an equal level with these these devils. It was then put under the power of the state, the constitutional arrangement, arrangement which declares that church and state are to be divorced, and tolerated more or less, the Catholic Church, the Catholic religion, was tolerated more or less at the whim of princes and rulers, and we could add presidents. Some men went further and wished to set up in the place of God's religion a natural religion. Anybody give a name to that? It's called Freemasonry condemned over and over again by the church. There were even some nations who thought they could dispense with God and that their religion should consist in impiety and neglect of, or public denial or rejection of God. The rebellion of individuals and of nations against the authority of Christ has produced deplorable results such as those Western nations inspired by the secular naturalistic Judeo-Masonic cult of Lucifer under the guise of democracy. That's a little commentary at the end. But that was in 1925. So, you see, that's just one of the popes. And Pius X will rise up condemning the, the modernism. And one thing about this conciliar church that we have to remember, we don't have to fear that we're not being Catholic because we're, we're, we're not in the local parish, we're not in good terms with the Holy Father, Pope Francis. The ones that are in good terms with him are all the ones Christ condemned and called his enemies. But the, the great Archbishop Lefebvre, his role 
that he set for us to follow was to hold the faith. We must never compromise with this, this onslaught against the Catholic faith. And this is what triumphed at Vatican II, everything these popes have, have condemned. And this conciliar church, which we must never make peace with, and this, this, this defines why you and I are here now. We don't want to go with Bishop Follet's new direction with modernist Rome. He has signed on to accepting Vatican II as deepening and enlightening Catholic tradition, which it does not. Catholic tradition, in fact, condemns everything about Vatican II. You can't make peace with Vatican II. You men might go home tonight and celebrating Christmas and have a beautiful uh, blend of, uh, what do they call it, the screwdriver, orange juice and vodka. And if someone snuck into your house and put some poison in, and can you say, well, I'll just drink the good part and leave out the poison? You can't. The poison penetrates through and through the whole drink. And if you drink it, you're, you're dead. Vatican II is that. And for those who want to say, well, we can interpret Vatican II in the light of tradition. Vatican II, well, we just have to interpret it in the right way, and it can be remedied. No way. Archbishop Lefebvre said the whole thing is poisoned through and through. Not only the council, but all its reforms. All its reforms, including the new mass, and the new rites, the new sacraments. That's why he made war. We, 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 we prefer to stay Catholic. And you can excommunicate us, you can step on us, spit on us, but we will stand with Christ at the cross. And we're not going to compromise the faith. That's where we have to stand. And that, now we have to say this to Bishop Fillet and the leaders of the Society of Pius X. Bishop Fillet should have told the Holy Father, you can take your 50 year celebration of Vatican II, <laughs> etc. <laughs> and Archbishop Lefebvre would have never, ever, never, ever participated in that. So that, the Conciliar Church as Father Gomer de Pau, you want to hear some of his talks, him and Father Gregory Hess, their, their talks are available, you can find them on Tradcat Night. They're very good. And these were, these were Father Gomer de Pau didn't even know Archbishop Lefebvre. And he rose up in the United States. He was a canon lawyer and a theologian and a good priest. And he rose up against the council and against the new mass. And he said something very, very powerful. And he said that this conciliar church lies under two curses, and we could add a third, but he said two. First, the curse under the Council of Trent that said, if anyone dared to, to, to take the Mass and say that it can be offered in the vernacular, in our case English, let him be anathema, let him be condemned. So that curse by the Council of Trent, by the authority of all the Blessed Trinity, hangs on the Conciliar Church. It's a, it's a real curse. They are, they've condemned themselves. The second curse on the conciliar church is from St. Pius V in his bull Quo Primum, where he says, if anyone dares to change his mass and, and even touch the rubrics, he will incur the anger of Almighty God and of the apostles Peter and Paul. So the, the, the conciliar church hangs with two heavy curses. And the third, we could add, is St. Pius X's curse. He condemned modernism, and he condemned one of the tactics of the modernists, which is double tongue, which is an ambiguous language. Says the Holy Scripture, God hates the double-tongued. He hates the double-tongued. And you look at Vatican II, it's double-tongued. They themselves admitted it. Father Schielebeck, he said, we deliberately put equivocal or ambiguous phrases in the council so that afterwards we could use it to destroy the church. They've admitted it. And even Bishop Follet, said to say, admitted to this doctrinal declaration which professes a new faith that we want nothing to do with Vatican II, New, <coughs> new Code, the destruction of the Catholic faith and an attack against Christ's kingship, his divinity, his priesthood. He himself admitted, if you look at this document with dark sunglasses, you can interpret it one way. If you look at it with pink sunglasses, you can interpret it another way. Why did he sign it? We've all been trained to know the tactic of the modernists. They speak with the forked tongue. They speak ambiguously. 
So St. Pius X, his rage and his condemnations hang over the conciliar church. And now the leaders of the Society of Pius X want to be in agreement and, and canonically recognized by these criminals? And that defines where we have to stand now. And call yourselves what you want. Any title, any name, any group. But we just want to stay Roman Catholic. And we use the term resistance, or Society of the Tenth Marian Corps, to make that distinction. But to stay Catholic, we must not, we cannot go towards this uh, reconciliation with, with modernist Rome. And it's already paid for. The doctrinal declaration is it. The general chapter statement is it with the six conditions, which is binding that Bishop Fillet signed to. So do pray for him. We are in a very grave, grave battle where our Lord has shaken his whole Catholic Church and now he's shaking the last lifeboat of tradition. This is Isaiah Pius X. And he's, uh, he's seeing who, who really is serious about standing up with him. Who's really, really serious about gathering around the foot of the cross to huddle under the Virgin Mary, under her powerful mantle, to keep the faith and to be spit on, cast out, rejected, persecuted. And we haven't even come to blood yet. Remember the Catholics in England refused to go to the, the local new mass, which was said in English, facing the altar, communion in the hand, very similar to the new mass. And the Catholics who refused to go, and especially if they had a priest say mass in their house, they, were, uh, they would be heavily fined. Second time, they would be put in prison. Third time, hanged, drawn, and quartered. So, this fight we're in, dear faithful, Archbishop Lefebvre expressed it himself several times. It's important that the faithful understand that you're fighting in the victorious line of, 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 of a blood-drenched path of the martyrs of France who rose up against the French Revolution and, and did not want the priests who signed the oath. They compromised on the faith and if you read what they signed on and read what was signed by the leaders of the SSPX, what was signed in 2012 was far worse. Far worse. And one of the people in France, in the Vendée, when they saw the, the police guards escorting the, the juring priests into their town, the people lined up and said, Get out of here, Father. We don't want you here. Your soul's in danger of going to hell. You signed that compromise document, get out of our town. And the police would force him at the altar and uh, he would uh, say the Latin Mass, of course. They didn't have the new Mass, 1792, 1793. And the ladies would scrub the floors because their church had been contaminated by compromising priests. And in the great uh, Flanders, Belgium, they rose up also. Mar thousands of martyrs in Flanders, Belgium, and these were great fighters. And they also fought, literally fought militarily against these police and the Mason, Masonic armies coming in. And the Masonic armies, of course, funded by the state. They had all the fancy uniforms. They had all the top rifles. They had all the top drums and banners. And these, these farming people had their hoes. They had a few guns. They had rocks. And they fought valiantly. Many of them died valiantly. This is our same fight. It's the same principles that we are in the line of, says Archbishop Lefebvre. And we have to realize that. One of these great priests was Father Charles Nerings, who is buried in Kentucky, not far from where the seminary is in Boston. He founded an order of nuns of Loretto. And open brackets, those nuns would travel, ten of them would travel on foot to Santa Fe, and that's where the St. Joseph Staircase is built, where those nuns had the school. And St. Joseph built the, the staircase. And there's a whole story to that. Close brackets. But this great priest, during the, the French Revolution, he said Mass in barns. He said Mass in the woods at midnight. People would gather. He slept in chicken coops. He had to run for his life many times. He would sleep oftentimes in the... the 
the nuns' hospitals because they would protect him. And he ended up coming to the United States. And he found he built many churches, and he founded a, a convent of nuns, at least one of them, maybe two. And he was a great, great priest, Father Charles Nerings. One of those of the caliber of the Belgian and Flemish uprising. So that's just one example. But what were they rising against? They were rising against the destruction of, the, of Christ's kingship and the pushing on them the separation of church and state, which is what Vatican II canonized by the document on religious liberty. And this is, this is so serious. Because religious liberty, what's it mean in practice? It means abortion laws. In the name of human rights, abortion laws. It means sodomite laws. It means killing the innocent people still breathing in the name of organ donation. It's, it's murder going on every day in our hospitals. In the name of the new definition of death, brain death. They pull, extract the heart, extract the liver while they're still breathing. They're still having blood circulation, still urinating, still functioning, digesting, and kill them. In the name of organ donation. Where is the Pope condemning this? In all the bishops, they're silent. Because it's a billion dollar business going on. And it's, it's a huge scandal. But why these laws? Because of religious liberty. And religious liberty says that any religion has the right to spread publicly. It's, it's, it's garbage. And what does that do to the sheep? It misleads them and leads them to hell. A little example, you parents, every day, you have the cruelty and the strictness and the, uh, uh, you take away your children's rights, so to speak, to uh, eat what they want. You censor what, you're, what you put on the table. You're not going to put junk, you're not going to put poison, you're not going to put sweet tasting rat poison. You make sure your children eat what's more or less good for them, right? So. That's the duty of the state and the church also, to take care of the souls. And this is the great crime of Vatican II. One, just one heresy, of which Bishop Follet sadly signed on to. So this defines why this fight is so serious. Because once you cave in on principles, once you cave in on the ideas, the doctrine, you're finished. You're finished. Um, any engineer knows if he makes one mistake in his blueprints, even a, a milli, half an inch off when he's building a bridge, for example, or a building, it, it can have terrible consequences. The whole side collapsing and the loss of lives. Or an engineer building a plane or something. Anything wrong, any error in the principles will lead to disastrous consequences. And if that's the way it is with buildings and bridges and airplanes, all the more for our eternal souls. And that's why the Catholic Church has always so vehemently defended the true doctrine and died, so many martyrs died for the true doctrine. And that's why, that's why we, now we have to fight to defend the true doctrine of the Catholic Church and not accept any compromise which is happening now with the leadership of our, uh, of our beloved once SSPX. But we claim to be continuing the SSPX, but we don't want to be part of the conciliar SSPX, which is, which is falling. So I beg you, do pray. Pray that the Pope consecrate Russia. Pray that Bishop Follet turns around and wakes up and at least condemns what he signed before he dies and the priests that are with him. Father Schmidtberger, you can read in an interview done this month, December 15th in Germany, he says this year of mercy is going to conclude with the normalization of the Society of Pius X, with the canonical setup, which is exactly what Archbishop Lefebvre warned against. And he said it many times, do not seek an agreement with Rome or canonical normalization until what? Until Rome comes back to the Catholic faith. And he wrote to the four bishops until Rome, until we have a perfectly Catholic Pope in the seat of Rome. And we're far from that now. <coughs> Why are they seeking this compromise? 
Why is Bishop Fillet and the leaders putting so many souls of his priests in danger and so many families and schools in danger? It's, it's, it's hard to believe, but we're living through it. And what are we supposed to do? Fold our eyes and just pretend like nothing's going on, nothing's changed. That's what they're saying, nothing's changed. But the biggest thing has changed. The worst thing that could possibly happen has happened, which is a change of the faith. That doctrinal declaration doesn't say practical declaration, liturgical de declaration, or uh, priest training declaration. It is doctrinal. That is the doctrine of the Holy Catholic faith that has been compromised. It is worse. It, and it logically will lead to what happened to Campos Brazil. Campos Brazil in 2003, they made the agreement with Rome. Back then, Bishop Follet still had some Catholic wits, and he warned them, don't make an agreement with Rome, it'll be your downfall. They didn't listen to him, and he was right. And uh, what happened to Campos Brazil? What happened to those good fighting priests who were defending tradition, defending the true mass? Ten years later, they totally accept Vatican II, some of them are saying the new Mass facing the people with altar girls and giving communion in the hand. Once you change the principles, the, the consequences are a disaster. It's happened to Campos. Remember the Redemptorists? Remember the Catholic paper that used to spread out? <clears throat> and they came and did numerous missions in the United States. <coughs> I don't know if they came to Syracuse. But they, they preached excellent missions, the Order of St. Alphonsus Liguri. Sadly, they also fell in 2012. They signed the agreement with Modernist Rome. They came under the local diocesan bishop in Scotland. And, uh, and then he let them publish their paper throughout the world? No way. Did he let them travel throughout the world to preach missions? No way. Did he duct tape them and tell them, be good little boys and stay in your, in your hermitages? And that's, what, that's what's happened. They're, they're little puppies with duct tape all over their, no, mo, their nozzle. And the popes have said this. Pope St. Gregory said, priests are not supposed to be dogs that uh, lie duct taped. They're, not, they're supposed to bark when they see her, error, heresy, compromise. But in the, under the new regime of the new SSPX, any priest who dares to speak out against this, they are silenced, they are punished, they are uh, threatened, transferred punitively. Father Peter Scott, pray for him, he should not be going along with this. But in the 2012 in April, he told his parish in Canada, we cannot go along with any agreement with Rome until Rome comes back to tradition. He was instantaneously called and shipped to South Africa. He, well, there was a delay of a year, but uh, they jumped right on him. And it's still going on. So this shows you there's a new direction, but because of the punishments. The, the punishments, which are cruel and unjust. But the priests have to speak out. And then when you talk to these good priests here in Syracuse, ask them, do you agree with Vatican II? Well, of course not. Do you agree with the new Mass? Well, of course not. Do you agree with the new code and the new profession of faith? Well, no, I would never then why don't you preach against it in the doctrinal declaration signed by Bishop Fillet? Oh, well, I can't do that. I'll lose my pension. Of course, SSPX pension, that's a, that's a joke. But they'll lose their reputation, they'll be kicked out, they'll be silenced, they'll be transferred. But just ask them, dare one of them. Dare them. Father, you got a duty to defend the faith. Now attack this doctrinal declaration signed by the Superior General and the general chapter statement, and the six conditions. Because it all compromises the Holy Catholic faith and, and completely revolts and overthrows what, the, what Archbishop Lefebvre established. So, dear faithful, uh, our Lord is the sign of contradiction. And when we come down to it, it's not just about documents. It's not about who we're with, Bishop so-and-so or Bishop such-and-such. It's not about personalities. This fight is about our Lord Jesus Christ and to stay faithful to Him. And in line with all the popes of tradition. 
and in line with all the magisterium of the church. And we ourselves, especially as Americans, we have to convert. We have to re-study what the church teaches, what the popes have said about democ modern democracy, what the popes have said about separation of church and state, what the popes, have, <coughs> the, 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 the magisterium guided by the Holy Ghost, have said about freedom of the press, freedom to teach what you want, freedom of the conscience, freedom of uh, the video, and all these things, this, the, the lack of censorship, which is killing our nation. Just take one example, which is an obvious one. The pornography industry is a billion-dollar industry. That means they're making tons of money. That means people are enslaved to this. And it's ruining marriages. It's ruining our men. It's ruining the youth. In a normal, a normal state, they would, they would censor this from the Internet. Because it's really destroying people. It's destroying their wills. It's wrecking marriages. It's, it, just read it yourself. The, the harmful effects of pornography. That's just one example. But let alone the harmful effects of heresy and error. So let us love our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray to the Immaculate Heart of Mary to, to give us the gifts of the Holy Ghost to understand that we cannot sit back and just ride along the current. We have to fight. God has put us in this position now to fight. You've got to keep the faith. You've got to study. You've got to pray. The rosary, especially every day. Wear Our Lady's scapular. Be missionary. And uh, get others to, to read. Get others to come to know the Holy Catholic faith. And the Internet has its negatives, but it also has its positives. Tell people some good websites. The Recusant does a good job, Tradcat Knight. Hugh Akins has published numerous excellent booklets of the Pope's teachings and the Father Dennis Fahey. And his is at uh, Catholic Action... What is it here? Um, CatholicActionResourceCenter.com, that's his. And he does a great job. So... So, dear faithful, let's, let's pray. Let's pray to this king that we adore, who comes down very soon on this altar. He is a true good king, because he doesn't just sit up on his throne watching us suffer down here. He came down and suffered for us, to save us from burning in hell forever. He came to save us through his precious blood, which is poured out in confession, because he washes your soul and frees us from the chains of the devil and mortal sin. And he himself comes down to feed you with not some, you know, some great cooking from heaven, but his own flesh, his own blood. What greater love than this can any man have than to lay down his life for his friends? And he lays down his life and reenacts Calvary and feeds your soul. Because he knows we're in this hard combat, we're in this weary war, in this terrible crisis, this nightmare of the church history with the Pope going crazy and the whole church upside down, and how long is this going to go on? But he'll feed you, he'll strengthen you, and he gives us the two hearts of Jesus and Mary. So be love these hearts, speak to them throughout the day and in the night. Be united to them, and uh, know your faith. We all have to discover more and more the great, beautiful doctrine. And remember this, uh, the Catholic Church is going to last on. It's going to continue and she's going to rise from the dust as our Lord promised. And Our Lady's victory cannot be all that far off as things get worse. So pray to her for her triumph to come soon. O Mary conceived without sin. O Mary conceived without sin. O Mary conceived without sin. O the Father, Son, Holy Ghost.
Dove si può prendere il cartone? Eh, 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 Secular, secular, all of us. Fetchati, salutare gusmoniti, e divina institutione formati, ademus dicere, pater moster, qui es in ceris, san di vicetum nomen tuum, adveni ad regnum tuum, fia voluntas tua, sicur in cielo et in terra, pan nostrum quotidiano da nobis odie, e dimite nobis de vita nostra, sicura nos dimitimus e vitoribus nostris, e ne nos inducas in tentazione. Sede per nostro mal. Yeah. 
Amen. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tolit peccata mundi. Domine non sentinius, ut in trez de tectum meum, sit anum de verbo, et sen abitur anima mea. Domine non sentinius, ut in trez de tectum meum, sit anum de verbo, et sen abitur anima mea. Domine non sentinius, ut in trez de tectum meum, sit anum de verbo, et sen abitur anima mea. Amen. 
in unitate de Spiritu Santi Deus, per onde segura seguro. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum, Ecum Spiritu, Ita Misa Es, Deo Gratis.